Uh, okay guys, I finished the simulation and I can say we have a pretty uh, much a healthy simulation here, but the very problem uh, I guess is that uh, there are really a few particles that are trying to escape and I don't think they are really that important. Here is the uh, quick preview of the meshing. So let's just quickly take a look at what we have here. I'm gonna stop, get back to frame zero, and that's what we have. Let's hit play, and that's our particle simulation. Another thing that I notice is the simulation looks like to be very slow, and uh, really it's uh, not a biggie because we can simply solve it using the retime simulation tool inside RealFlow, and this tool is very powerful. It simply makes your simulation as uh, fast or as slow as you want without having to do the re-simulation again and that's uh, really unique and uh, we're going to be using it to uh, have a, a basically a bit faster version of our simulation maybe twice faster than this and uh, maybe we use this one or that one but uh, I guess it's a good idea to have a retimed version of your simulation whether, whether slower or faster in this case we want uh, a faster version and that would really uh, I think uh, helps a lot to uh, make the simulation a bit uh, nicer, a bit uh, greater, and uh, just to have a bit more active, uh, I'm gonna do that. Now, after the uh, particle simulation is done, we basically need to go ahead and do the uh, mesh and uh, basically uh, convert this particle to uh, a mesh that we can use it inside Cinema 4D. Now, I'm gonna close this window. I did the particle mesh just to make sure everything is all right, but I'm gonna walk you through the process of meshing that you are gonna be doing here. So let's go ahead and start working on our uh, meshing situation. So I have this mesh here, so I'm going to uh, basically uh, for the moment uh, go ahead and uh, disable it and also hide it. Just make sure we don't see it at all at the moment. It's saved and we can use it again, but I'm gonna uh, go ahead and start working on our meshing uh, situation here. Let me go ahead to maybe a frame like maybe here and then I'm going to select uh, go to the mesh shelf here and down here you have different uh, particle mesh, the particle mesh legacy, the hybrid mesh and some other tools. I'm gonna go ahead and start working with the particle mesh so add it to your scene uh, if we had just one emitter, it would possibly uh, recognize the emitter and it will be good to go just by clicking on this particle mesh. But in this case, we have several emitters, three emitters in this case, and we need to introduce our emitters to our particle mesh. For that matter, you simply go ahead and right click and go ahead and click on insert emitters. After you do that, you have three emitters, you can simply click on all and all the three emitters is going to be added to these uh, particle mesh 0, 2. Okay, so this is the first thing that you're going to need to do. And uh, after that, we can go ahead and change some settings, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, build a frame and see how exactly it looks like. So let's go ahead and get closer, maybe to about here. Right click on your particle mesh and click build. It's going to take a few seconds. Now, as you can see, our mesh is finished. I'm going to go ahead and uh, for the moment hide the particle so we just have the mesh and go ahead select the mesh and change its uh, visibility basically to be a smooth shaded and that's what we have at the moment so you can see this is the mesh that we have we need to change some settings to make it more active but I think this is a good start the next thing I'm going to do is to select the particle mesh go to the setting you got different uh, settings here the uh, weighted isotropic, the weighted anisotropic, or the metaballs. Uh, for this case, you can go ahead and select it to metaballs or this anisotropic version, but I think for this case, the isotropic version would be the uh, nicest one. Uh, it really depends on your scene, but this one is, uh, in this case, works best. I'm going to go ahead and uh, the polygon size at the moment is uh, 005, or better to say 05. And I'm going to click on this and reduce it to have a better and higher quality polys. I'm going to uh, scale it down to something like 0.3. Okay. And if I rebuild the uh, mesh, right click build, you can see we're going to have a smaller uh, particle. The mesh creation, you can see it's going to 
take more time but it's finished and I think uh, this way we're gonna have a bit more details and let me go ahead maybe to a frame let's see so we have a bit more detail maybe something like here would be nice so I'm going to right click on this and click build that takes some time but and I'm running a few softwares in the background so here is the mesh that we have and I'm going to actually hide the particles again not this the particles so let's go ahead and select all of them and basically hide them so this is the mesh that we have for the moment the next thing I'm going to do is to let's see what we have down here I'm gonna uh, go ahead and go to my filters tab uh, turn on the filters and I'm not gonna do much I'm just going to turn on the filter so we have a bit of relaxation and for the steps I'm gonna go ahead uh, to something like 8 okay so uh, we have a you know a bit smoother uh, especially for the beginning part of our simulation where we have so uh, kind of chaotic uh, particles this really, really helps to make sure our simulation is gonna be nicer the next thing I'm gonna do maybe it's very important is to select these uh, three particles and I'm gonna go ahead and change the their radius so from uh, point 0.8 I'm gonna go uh, and maybe something like point 0.4 let's see and one more time and by the way if you wanna uh, wanna know what exactly these fields are doing simply when are you working on a field for example radius just uh, simply hit F1 and it will give you a description about the field and what it does okay so uh, let's go ahead and rebuild our mesh and I'm gonna go ahead uh, we are at frame 533 I'm gonna go to 534 and right click on the mesh and click belt and this way we're gonna have another mesh and we can compare the two together you can see <laughs> at the moment this is what we have uh, you can see uh, extremely chaotic for the moment I'm gonna go ahead and select the particle mesh and uh, let's see what we're gonna do um, let's uh, go ahead and change the polygon size to something like 60 and I'm going to select these guys and maybe let's go ahead and change this to something like uh, 0.5 I think I put the radius on 0.5 on our uh, last simulation there so let's um, make it now. I'm not sure. Let's see what we have and why this is happening here. So I'm going to right click on this and say build. It's going to take some time. There we go. It's a bit big. I think in this main particle mesh, the radius I was it was 0.4. So and these guys are 0.5 at the time. So let's see what else do we have on this thing that uh, the smoothness is set to 60. So let's go ahead and change this particle mesh back to 0.4 for the moment. And I'm going to increase the smoothness amount to 60. And uh, let's rebuild the scene and see what we're going to get this time. okay the meshing process is done let's get back a few frames belt there we go so I think it's very nice for the moment let's go ahead maybe to a frame like here and build the mesh and see if we like it or not I think we have a quite a nice mesh and it can be uh, we can add more extra surface detail in cinema 40 if we like but for this moment I think we have a uh, quite a nice mesh and simply we can go ahead and uh, start building the mesh now in order to build your final mesh what you can simply do is select your particle mesh that you wanna uh, mesh the whole frame uh, make sure in your export central that you have the uh, if you go up there here you got the particle mesh 01 and 02 as you can see and both of are going to be saved as the mesh cache which is exactly what we want uh, you can actually save them as obj 
uh, alembic and stuff like that in this case we're just going to save it as uh, the .bin file and we can simply import them inside Cinema 4D now after you have done that you can go ahead into your mesh tool and click on the build mesh okay very very simply click on the build at the selected meshes from the current frame to the end of the timeline and it will go through and create the whole mesh uh, for the whole timeline so in this case I'm going to these um, particle mesh 02 and delete it because I simply don't need it and if I go to file uh, open project folder you have these meshes folder that's where the particle meshes are going to be saved this is our particle mesh 01 that I did it and there should be some frames for particle mesh 02 so I'm going to actually select uh, all of this that we created just now and uh, delete them we have all the frames that we need from here so uh, you go there and you build your own uh, particle mesh because uh, I think they're sort of huge uh, if I say um, let's see how much the mesh folder it's about 2.3 GB. I'm not sure if I can provide the mesh file, so you have to do your uh, mesh uh, here. And the particles are so huge, so about 10 GB. So really, we can't uh, supply you with the particle, and you have to uh, generate your own particles. Uh, so uh, also, uh, the other process that I would love to see, let me see, uh, give you the uh, mesh that I have here in the uh, scene and this is the mesh I'm just going to reactivate it and that's the mesh that we have in the scene you can see we got a lot of nice details and really we can make uh, some uh, quite nice looking stuff in real in Cinema 4D after that uh, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and create a, a preview from this simulation and I'll be back with you when the simulation is done when the uh, preview is uh, ready so go to playback and click on uh, video preview cached frames gonna take a few moments but this is basically the simulation that we are having okay guys so the simulation is uh, the preview sorry is done and if I hit play you can see this is what our mesh is looking like there we go some cool stuff going on here um, I think the particle uh, simulation and the mesh generation took about 2 hours and 10 minutes for me. It really depends on your machine how fast and how powerful it is. Uh, it might take 1 hour, it might take 30 minutes, it might take uh, a day or two. It really depends on you and your machine. So this is the simulation I have here. Now another thing that I'm going to do uh, really before anything is to go ahead and create a, a faster version of our simulation so we can... Uh, I. I think I'm gonna use that I'm not sure really but I think this one is very slow uh, we are uh, previewing our uh, video here at uh, frame uh, rate of 30 FPS we can go uh, 24 if we would like but uh, I think it's not gonna be that important here so this is our simulation and uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and start working on retiming my scene now uh, in order to do that simply go to the uh, tools shelf and you have a tool called the retime simulation click on this the next thing if you want you can actually go ahead and open your uh, edit function and really work on your create some uh, curves and stuff like that but in this case if you want to create some uh, uh, slow motion sort of look uh, but in this case I'm just going to have a, a version that is twice faster than what we have right now so for that you just need to go to uh, your time factor right now you can see the output frame and the output uh, the original frame are exactly the same if I go to something like 2 you can see now we have a simulation that is twice faster the output frame is 125 it's 200 so it's twice faster than the original simulation so this is the first thing that you uh, need to do if you want more have more control you can go ahead and edit the function uh, but in this case we really don't need it the next thing is go to your input output setting here you define what you want to uh, to be retimed in this case we want the particles to be retimed because uh, I think uh, I, I think I'm gonna use the particles also in Cinema 42 if you uh, if you've seen the original design I add some I have some really small 
uh, uh, white particles inside the uh, fluid that comes from this particle. So I'm going to retime the particles also as mesh cache that bin. The poly will, uh, we're not really going to do that. Uh, for the, uh, this is the mesh, sorry, sorry, I was talking about the particles here, the particle mesh that uh, we need to actually be retimed. So make sure it is checked and the format that you want to be retimed. Uh, the uh, original uh, logo, we really don't want to do anything with it. The square emitter, as you can see, is going to be our first square and our uh, second one and our third one. Uh, both uh, the all of them are going to be retimed. And if we have a sort of um, animation and the uh, we have ex imported from Cinema 4 tutorial flow, and if we want both animation uh, to, if especially if the objects are actually interacting with the fluids you need to have this turned on but I'm gonna actually go ahead and have it turned on now you can have a subfolder in your original folder for example if you create a subfolder named let's go ahead and name it retimed and the file uh, suffix is here retimed what's gonna happen the subfolder uh, the subfolder called retime will be created in your mesh folder and uh, that folder will contain all the retimed frames of your simulation I'm gonna show you after the retiming is done so you go ahead if you uh, can define a prefix if you wanted to I'm just going to have this uh, file suffix it's gonna uh, serve the purpose here and basically after you have done all of that you simply go ahead and uh, click on retime uh, I'm not sure how much it's gonna take uh, but uh, when it's done I'm gonna get back to you and uh, show you the uh, retimed version and from the next section we start uh, importing the whole simulation back to Cinema 4D and start uh, making some nice stuff and uh, some lighting, rendering, compositing and everything that's involved. Okay, so the retime process is finally done and if I go to the file and go to the project folder if you go to, for example, the meshes, you can see we have a new folder called Retime, and that's exactly the same simulation, but it's faster version. It's twice faster than it was before, and also in the particle folder, you have this Retime version, Retime folder that basically contains the same simulation, but uh, you know, twice faster. So that's very important. And uh, uh, if you, uh, the folders are getting a bit huge. You can see the particles are about 15 gigabyte. The meshes are about uh, five gigabyte. And uh, when we go inside Cinema 4D, uh, we can decide which version of this uh, faster or, or slower version to use. I think I'm going to use the faster version, uh, but I'm really not sure yet. And uh, then we can get rid of the other simulation just to make sure uh, we don't have so much uh, stuff on our hard drive. So uh, we are ready to actually go ahead in uh, Cinema 4D and import our meshes in Cinema 4D and start uh, doing some nice uh, renders inside Cinema 4D and hopefully be able to have some nice renders and some lighting set up uh, to just make this uh, uh, very uh, simple meshes to something quite nice and uh, it's gonna be uh, a lot of fun inside Cinema 4D so uh, in the next section we start uh, our project we're basically done with real flow uh, maybe we need to get back to change some stuff but for the most part we're done inside real flow and we can close the software for uh, the rest of the premium uh, tutorial uh, premium course here and we are uh, op going to open up cinema 4d and start uh, having some fun with the mesh that we have so see you there